In this lesson, we're going to begin looking at polygons in the coordinate plane, and a large part of this is going to be how coordinates, obviously, and formulas related to those coordinates affect our ability to make measurements and decisions in the coordinate plane for these polygons. So let's begin with the distance formula. Distance formula, as I stated in an earlier lesson, is just a glorified form of the Pythagorean theorem. In order to calculate distance, d, it is the square root of our change of x, or our horizontal movement, squared, plus our change of y, our vertical movement, squared. Now, we can use this formula related to the theorems that we have so far in this unit in order to do the following. And that is show that the side lengths are congruent of a figure or that the diagonals are congruent because we have a lot of theorems that are based on those ideas. Next is midpoint formula. M midpoint, again, is just an average. So in order to calculate the midpoint, what we do is typically we call it M. And M is equal to the point x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And all you're doing is you're finding the averages of your x's and the average of your y. Now when would we use this? Well, it can be used in the following situations. We can find the midpoints of sides and we can know that if a pair of diagonals actually bisect each other or are just close. Last up is our slope formula. And the slope formula, m, is equal to our change of y divided by our change of x. Now the way you find a change is simply take two y values and subtract them. So it would be y2 minus y1 change of x would be x2 minus x1. Now it does not matter which point you select as being your first or your second, just make sure they go in the same order. Now slope we can use in the following ways. And that is to determine if lines are parallel, for instance in parallelograms, or if lines are perpendicular. That could be diagonals being perpendicular or side lengths being perpendicular because we would need that for rectangles or squares. So with all these applications, or all these items, how do we begin applying them? Let's take a look at them. What type of triangle has vertices located at the points D, 0, 0, E, 1, 4, and F, 5, 2? Justify your answer. Now for these this types of triangles, we're talking a scalene, an isosceles, or an equilateral. So we need a lot of information here about side lengths. First, let's just plot the points to see what they would look like. D is located at the point 0, 0. E is at 1, 4. And F is at 5, 2. Now, if we were to connect these points to form a rough triangle, what type of triangle is this? It looks like it could be either scalene or isosceles, but let's do the work for it. Let's find the distances between pairs of points. So I want the distance of DE. And that's going to be equal to the square root. What's our change of x? Well, from 0 to 1 is 1, so we take 1 and square it. And our change of y from 0 to 4 is 4 and square it. So, this gives us the square root of 17. Next, let's find the distance of EF. You know, I should have labeled my points on my graph, so we'll call it D, E, and F, so we get a reminder real fast. Equal to, from E to F, our vertical change is 4. Uh, sorry, our horizontal change is 4, and our vertical change, it goes down 2, but distance is always positive, so that's 2 squared. 
That gives us 16 and 4, so this is the square root of 20. So we have two different side lengths. That rules out an equilateral. Let's see what we can find if we have isosceles or scalene. Next, I need the distance of df. And that is equal to from 0 in my x to 5 in my x. That's a distance of 5. So we have 5 squared. And then for the y's, 0 to 2 is a distance of 2. Square those and add them together. We have 25 plus 4, which is 29. Square root of 29. Because all three side lengths are different, square root of 17, square root of 20, square root of 29, we have to conclude that this is a scalene triangle. So we can begin using our coordinates to justify the different shapes that we have been working with, both triangles, and now let's take a look at one for quadrilateral. What kind of quadrilateral is formed by the points given, M, N, P, and Q? Then justify your answer. Here, we're going to be looking at side lengths and slopes. So we have a bit more work to carry out. But let's start by plotting our points. M is at 0, 1. N is at negative 1, 4. P is at 2, 5. And Q is at 3, 2. So now, from the appearance, this definitely looks like a parallelogram, but we could be wrong. Um, could be a rectangle, a rhombus, a square. I think we can rule out trapezoid, but let's not jump to conclusions. Let's do the work and prove it. So let's begin with distances. The distance from M to N is the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, so this is the square root of 10. The distance from N to P is equal to the square root. Our, we have a horizontal change of 3 and a vertical change of 1. So again, we have a square root of 10. So we have two adjacent sides that are of the same length. That could be a kite, but let's continue on. The distance from P to Q, we have, we move right one, and we move down three. So again, we have a square root of 10. And last one, the distance from M to Q, we move up three, and right one, so we have a square root of 10. So all of them have the same length. That means that we're looking at either a rhombus or a square. The distant difference between a rhombus and a square is the slope of the lines. Do they intersect perpendicular or in some other way? And the only thing we need to do is find one right angle and justify that. So let's find the slope of M N. Okay, so our change of Y is up 3. Our change of X is left 1. So our slope here is a negative 3. Next, let's find our slope of n p. So our vertical change is up 1, our horizontal change is right 3, so our slope is 1 third. Now, in order to show that slopes are perpendicular, their product has to be negative 1. So let's take our negative 3 and multiply it by our 1 third, and we get negative 1. Because they are perpendicular, 
that means that we have a square. So this is a bit of a process, but it is possible to determine types of shapes simply based on the coordinates. So make sure you have good notes on this and are ready to use it because we are going to be using it quite a bit.